friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I have been wanting to do for a while now and I've been in the process of doing for like two months at this point. <laughs> so a while back on my Patreon I did a video where I was reacting to like five minute craft plant hacks because why not? See if any of them are viable and some of them actually seemed quite interesting and ones that I wanted to give a try for myself. So I decided to collate some of the plant hacks that I've been seeing across the internet on Reels, on TikTok, on 5 Minute Crafts and give them a go to see if they actually work or not so you don't have to suffer if they don't. But it turned out that a lot of the hacks that I wanted to try were ones that would take a little bit more time that I wouldn't be able to like immediately show you the results as soon as I started it. So I have been testing some of these hacks like I said for up to two months. It's been a minute. And now I think we're finally at a point where I can give you some results of these hacks but before I do I just want to say if you're new here and you don't know me already hi my name is Emma and I make house plenty content all over the internet so if you want to follow along with my house plenty journey and maybe learn something along the way stick around and watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel if you're not new here thanks for coming back I hope you enjoy this one as well so yeah let's get into these plant hacks so I want to start out on a bit of a positive note one that I like wasn't expecting to work as well as it freaking did. So here is the reel that I am testing and basically it is the hack that if you put pothos or epibramnum cuttings in with slower rooting props, specifically in water, I don't know if this works in like moss or other mediums, but if you put the pothos in it creates a like rooting hormone around and that spreads throughout the water and encourages your like slower rooting props to prop faster. I was kind of skeptical because I thought like there's no way this could like actually be that true but oh my goodness let me show you the process that I've gone through to test this one out. So I decided to test this one out with Syndapsis because it's one of my slowest rooting plants. So I took three very similar mid cuts and put them into my water propagation station. I then wanted to take this test one step further and see whether the number of pothos cuttings would affect the rate of root growth. So I put two in the first one, one in the second one, and none in the third to really give this a good test. So this first one here is the control, the one without any sort of pothos in it. And as you can see, it doesn't really have much roots. This is kind of what I would normally expect from a syndapsis in water after a month. Not really anything. They are one of the slower rooting plants for me personally, especially in water, but in moss and stuff as well, they do not root quickly. And so I'm not surprised where that one is. The syndapsis with one pothos cutting in it, look at that difference. How, like, that is easily twice or three times the amount of root as the previous one. Like, it has so much more, and like, this is way more than I would have expected a syndapsis to root in this time. Like, I, I am so surprised by the amount of growth I had on this one, and I noticed this after like maybe a week or two that it was starting to properly root, where the one without any pothos was doing nothing at that point. And then the biggest surprise of them all, I actually can't take out without taking the other ones out as well, is the one that had two pothos leaves in it. Look at that root! Compared to both of the previous ones, it is so so much growth and I'm so like, I, I, I was unsure whether or not having two pothos cuttings would help, whether or not it would like actually encourage more growth on the roots, but it very obviously has. So uh, I think this test is an absolute success. Also, you can see the pothos cuttings have so many more roots as well than the previous ones that I didn't even show you. They are like much, much more rooted already. So I think this hack is 
absolutely something that works and I will definitely be putting pothos cuttings in like future water props when I'm trying to get them to like grow faster because they made synapsis one of my slowest growing props root so freaking quickly I think I saw growth on this one after a week or two which is pretty unlike any synapsis I've ever seen previously Next, I am going to be showing you the one that made this video take so long for me to film, and it is a skeleton leaf tutorial. So I've been seeing skeleton leaves, like, show up around TikTok and Instagram, and it's always been something I've been curious to make. I think they look really freaking cool, but I was always scared to make them because they, they seem difficult. Um, like washing soda and stuff was called for in a lot of the like recipes and I don't have washing soda I wasn't gonna go out and buy washing soda so I finally decided to give it a go when I lost a couple of leaves that were like semi healthy oh I thought I heard a snap that's sad and I wanted to see if I was able to make them into skeletons because they, they're healthy enough. They weren't like damaged or anything. So I thought this was the perfect time to actually give it a proper try. So I put two leaves, an anthurium leaf and a philodendron leaf in some water and I left them there. And I've seen videos that said three weeks later you can take the leaf out and you're ready to go. Scrape off the like pulp, the tissue, and you got a skeleton leaf. I waited three weeks. I waited five weeks. I waited eight weeks. It is now two months later. Yes, two months later. And I haven't looked at these leaves in a little bit because I've just been, uh, I'm just, I'm expecting them to not be ready yet. So here is what they are looking like now. So let's open this up. It has been ages since I've changed the water at this point. Oh. That does smell bad. I should probably change the water now, but that stinks. For like the first week or so, I was changing the water pretty regularly, and then I just got lazy <laughs> about it. But, like, look at that. It just like isn't, like it's breaking, the leaf is breaking, but like, it just doesn't feel like it's ready. Oh, I just ripped it even more. <laughs> Whoops, maybe this one. This one might be a fail. Let's let's look at the other leaf in here. You have to be really, really gentle with these. This is the philodendron leaf. And this one, it's closer. You can like kind of feel the tissue coming away from the plant, but there's still these spots where it is quite green. And those don't feel like they're gonna come away quite yet. So I think I might have to leave this one in here a little bit longer. So I should probably change the water as well because that's gross. Two months later, and I can honestly say that I don't think these leaves are ready yet to be scraped. I don't know how someone is making this work in three weeks. Maybe they live in a warmer environment or something where it just speeds up the process. But these, these leaves are taking so, so, so long to like decompose. So a month ago, when I realized that this was going to take longer than I thought, I decided to give a different method a try to see if I could get it to work. So this is the method that I ended up going with. You can see there's not very much detail in this video. Like I didn't tell you measurements or anything like that. And this is, this is how it went. I started out by putting some boiling water in a pan and adding my baking soda to it. This is all I had, so it was just the amount that it had to be. And then I added my leaf in there and let it simmer for quite a long time. This is how it was looking after about half an hour. You can see it's going a little bit brown, but not nearly enough. After 90 minutes, this is how it was. So I decided to pull it out and see if I could get scraping some of that pulp off. You can see some's just coming off as it is. So I went in with my soft toothbrush and got as much off as possible. There were quite a few areas that I couldn't get much off of so I ended up soaking it for more time like just with the burner off just letting it sit in the water hopefully getting moister and I was able to get more off the second time. This is what it was looking like after it sat in the water for like four hours after the initial boiling session 
and I was finally able to get some of the stuff off the edges but I definitely wasn't able to get all of it but I did the best that I could. This is the other one I tried. It has worked so 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 much better. This has been drying for about a month now and I've been pressing it in between like the pages of a book and it is like properly I mean, it's quite hard to see because it's a skeleton leaf, but I think it looks so, so cool. I am tempted to bleach it because I have seen that that is a possibility, but I think I could definitely put this one in a frame and, like, it would be absolutely fine. I am slightly concerned about these areas along the edges of the leaf where I wasn't able to get all of the sort of tissue off, but... I don't know. I'm, I, I think it'll probably be okay, and maybe if I bleach it, like soak it in bleach water, it might take some more of those little bits off. But I think this is so, so cool, and it'll definitely make for a cool bit of art in my home, like once I decide exactly what I'm going to do with it. This next plant hack was one that I found in that original 5 Minute Crafts video, where someone takes a comb, and they're using it to hold like Christmas cactus or Thanksgiving cactus, holiday cactus leaves over the water so they're not like fully submerged and just like the tips where they will be getting like roots from are under the water which I think makes a lot of sense but I was I was skeptical at the same time you, you never really know with these things five minute crafts I would not say is a reliable resource for plant tips I wouldn't suggest most of the things that they try on there because a lot of the time I think it is like a gimmicky sort of thing. So this was one that I thought like might be viable. So this is what I've done to test it out. I love how easy it is to take holiday cactus cuttings because you can just kind of take off the little segments. So that's what I did. I took off four little segments and I grabbed my comb and started inserting them in between the little tines i don't know if that's what they're called but that's what i'm gonna call them for now but they fit actually quite well in between them it was quite easy to get them in the first time i did it you can see i didn't put them low enough so i shifted them down slightly higher up on the little segments i also shifted them over to the middle a bit more to set them in the comb and you can see right when I put them on the container of water that they now fit perfectly and just the bottoms are under the surface. This is my little comb slash Christmas cactus experiment. And to be honest, it has worked better than I thought. You can see that a couple of the cuttings have some roots. This one in the middle definitely doesn't. I think it's probably rotting, but I think having them like just barely sitting in the water like that definitely allows less of the leaf to be in contact and so it lowers the potential for rot in them the only thing with this is you need to make sure that you're keeping the water at a level where it is like just barely touching the bottom there has been a couple of times when i've noticed that it has gotten too low and i haven't filled it up fast enough but other than that it works really really well and like i most people have a comb in their home so it, this is a very easy and practical way to get these propping because otherwise with the cuttings this small you have a massive risk of them rotting so i am pleasantly surprised by how well this has worked and i should be able to pot, pot up at least the two on the ends fairly soon this next hack i saw it and i thought it would be perfect to try on one of my moss poles my big graffita for tetrasperma is on a huge moss pole like the the biggest moss pole i have in my collection and i have found that even though i water using the cup method like fairly regularly it it doesn't really hydrate down to the bottom of the pole and so i thought this hack would be the perfect solution to this problem and like really help make sure that the there's liquid evenly distributed <laughs> throughout the pole so i got some self-watering like globes and i got the mushroom ones as well because i thought they were the cutest of the options so this is my rafita for tetrasperma and as you can see it is on the biggest moss pole ever and i actually watered this one this morning i put water in the cup and so the top up here is nice and moist it has been hydrated with fertilizer water actually but if you look down the bottom down here it is not like fully dry but 
not as damp as I would like it to be and that means that the nutrients from my fertilizer water isn't getting down in there so the globes will hopefully remedy that so these are the globes that I got some cute little mushrooms and I'm gonna go fill them with just normal water not fertilizer water because I don't want to waste it if this doesn't work and I'm going to attempt to stick them into the pole <laughs> this makes me really nervous I've never used a water globe before can't even see it. It's like very hidden in there. So there they are and you can see they're like bubbling away a little bit which I think means that they're very slowly watering the moss pole. I'm gonna come back in I don't know five ten minutes and see how they're doing and see whether or not they have adequately hydrated this part of the pole. My only worry is that they will hydrate it too much and that the like soil down here will get too wet. Um, that is kind of like the problem with moss poles. You don't want to overwater the soil, but you do want to keep the moss nice and moist. I do think they look quite cute though, as little mushrooms in there, even though you can barely see them. So it's actually been, I think like an hour or two, and the globes are finally as empty as possible. You can see there is some water in there because of the shape. I guess if I put them more upright, they would pour more water in, but I mean, it's fine. I'm not too, too worried about it, but you can see, if I can zoom in there, that like the pole is much more moist around where the globes were. If you go all the way down to the bottom, you can see that it is still like somewhat dry. So it didn't work like perfectly. Maybe if I filled them up again, it would get down to this point. But I'm also kind of glad that it's dry because that means that the soil isn't getting too moist, which is the thing that I was worried most about. So overall, I think this actually is a pretty good option if you've got a big pole like this. I'm excited to see what happens if I put fertilizer water in them and whether or not they still work as well. And I mean, they're cute. So if nothing else, there's some little decorations in my moss pole. And then this last hack was one that again, I saw on 5 Minute Crafts. And it said to use water beads, or in the States, I think they're known as Orbeez. They're what I always knew them as. Um, but getting these water beads that you put in water and they expand, and you can then grow your plants in this material. I, I've been skeptical about this one as well, because I, like, is it just like growing your plants in water? Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you just grow your plants in water if you're, doing it like this. This is probably one I should have started a while ago as well, but it kind of just didn't occur to me as one that needed longer to test. So I will be trying it out for the first time with you today and we will see how like the beginnings go and I can be sure to update you down the line on whether or not my Orbeez propagation slash planting are doing well. So I have made my water beads and I got the clear ones because I think I prefer them um, <laughs> to the colored ones. The colors just aren't my style but I made a bunch there probably more than I needed to and I'm going to try putting this begonia that I've been propping in water this whole time. I said this whole time it's not been very very long but I've been propagating it in water and I'm just going to plop it in here and then fill the rest of that up with the water beads, the Orbeez. I feel like I should also put some water in there as well to make sure that it's like hydrated because I mean, it needs to have some water, right? I guess, I don't know. Let me grab some water. So what is cool is when you put water in it, the water beads kind of disappear and you can kind of just see the plant and the roots in there, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, you see the bubbles a little bit, but if you like get those out, it looks almost perfectly clear, which is pretty cool. And I guess I'll be able to like keep an eye on these roots better. The other thing that I really like about this that I wasn't expecting is that the cutting can stand like straight up in the middle instead of like leaning over to one side or the other, like it was in its previous vessel. I can like literally have it standing straight up. Also, if I wanted it to like be there instead like a little bit higher up not on the ground of the vessel i could have it like that so this might be a really good thing to use if you've got bigger vessels and 
like smaller cuttings. My first impressions are good. I will keep you all updated with like how this one goes though because who knows I might not like it. Maybe the water beads will just keep absorbing the water and I'll have to refill it up loads. Um, but for now, first impressions are good. <laughs> we'll see how it goes in time though. Um, yeah, sorry I didn't start this one sooner guys. <laughs> So that is it. Those are all of the plant hacks that I have tried for this video. I actually really enjoy trying plant hacks, so if you ever see any sort of houseplant hacks that you are curious about and want to see whether or not they work, pretty pretty please send them to me. I would love to give them a go and test them out because I find this super fun. And like it's good to see whether or not what people are putting out on the internet is truthful or like if it's just clickbait or something like that, like five minute crafts tends to be. But yeah, that was me trying out some plant tags. Before I sign off, I want to say a big welcome to the newest member of the Good Growing Fam, Susan. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you really enjoy it over on my Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future, other houseplant hacks you'd like me to try, and don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!